According to a Department of Education study, less than one-third of elementary and high school students show proficiency in geography. Where does a zebra live? Do you remember? In Africa? Good. As a teacher, Becky Morales saw this firsthand. She shares creative project ideas that help young children learn about the world and its cultures in fun and active ways. Why would you say that it's important to start so young? I used to be a high school teacher and when I taught Spanish, I noticed that the kids knew nothing about geography and this is in high school. So I started to introduce a lot of geography into my classes, but really I think that it needs to start young. How can parents help their own children at home become more globally aware, culturally aware, and better at their geography? Mm -hmm. That's a big question, but yeah. Well, I think that having maps around the house is the first step. Having a globe, having a map, and any time that geography comes up in conversation, you run to the map, you point it out, you talk about the differences in the borders and the oceans and the climate. Or, for example, there's a big sporting event like the Olympics or the Soccer World Cup. Um, we'll look at the teams that are playing, locate them on the map, try and find where they are, and we'll talk about traditions in the country. We notice that a lot are in Latin America or a lot are in Europe um, in the soccer games, so maybe we'll talk about how as a culture they love soccer that's their major game it's not football American football it's not baseball it's soccer and I try and tie in a lot of current events that are related to kids so for example there was a story about bananas and where we get them from so we're sitting around the breakfast table we're eating our bananas and I talk about the kids where do bananas come from and we look up on the globe and I'm pointing out the different countries in Central America in the Caribbean and South America and they notice that it's all by the equator so then we can talk about the climate look at how the equator is warmer. Look at, what does that say right here? Guatemala. Guatemala. And if you look right here in Central America, that's where it is. It's right by Mexico. So tell us a little bit about this other project you've got going on. This is something that the kids have done before that helps them figure out which is bigger, a city or a state, and what's a country. We start with my house and we have the kids draw a little house, whatever they want to represent their home. And then you go further out, the next step is your town or your city. So what do you think is a picture that represents your city? We have a lot of bayous, do you wanna draw that? The next one is your state. Okay, Vivi, so what comes after your city? State. Your state, yep, that's bigger, right? Yeah. So what's your state? Texas. So our state is Texas, so we drew a state, and they understand that the house goes in the city, the city goes in the state. Right, because each circle is bigger, so it fits inside. And then we have our country, so our state is inside our country, and it slowly moves out. Then you have your continent, and then finally we do our little planet here. And I think that this helps kids because they start to understand which concept goes inside and which contains the other. So you've got this fun laminated world map. Tell me how you use it with your family. We use this, for example, if we're reading a bunch of books over the summer, and we might mark all the settings of the books. And the kids like to mark it up too if they're learning about climate or if they're learning about, someone was learning about rainforests. And so we followed the equator all the way across the globe. Wow, so you've got reading connections, you've got um, math connections with distance, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of different, and science connections, we talked about climate. We have placements with maps on them and sometimes when I'm cooking, if you take a dry erase marker, you can write right on them. So I'll have the kids put a star on India, see who can show me where Ethiopia is. We also have a lot of puzzles, we have um, a lot of posters around, and I think if you have friends that live in other parts, even just of the United States, have them send you a postcard, have them send you um, a letter from there and you can talk about how it got to your city or your state. What if you're a parent who hasn't been exposed culturally or geographically? What can you do? What can that parent do to help their child? And a lot of parents ask that, or they ask, if we don't have the means to travel, how are we going to expose them? And there's so many ways that you can expose them in the home. You can take out books from the library. Your local library is a wealth of information about other cultures and other books. You can also go to celebrations in your town or city. You would be surprised how many different celebrations and different cultural centers are located in each major city. You would have never known if you hadn't looked them up. 
Why is it important to bring culture into the home? I think more and more the world is getting smaller and smaller and we're able to interact with people from all over the world. And if our, student, if our kids do not know how to communicate across cultures, do not understand cultural differences, are not aware that people have different perspectives, how are they going to be successful? This was so great. I love this. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your cool projects with us and teaching us about geography and world cultures. Thank you. It was fun. For more of Becky's ideas and projects, visit our activity section now.